But the Phoenix is one of those Hon Kai characters that you will never talk about when it's about those with great achievements or those that left a lasting impact in the game's universe. So with characters like her who looks pretty unremarkable, why then should we care? I want to tell you about how with any other minor characters like her, instead of them being a driving force behind how the lore develops, they become a lens through which the story uses to iterate its themes and ideas and it's about this thing. Yo, there's a stray cat outside! Can? Khan? Khan Chang. What's an anomaly called the projection of memories, which was only unique to Pardophilus. It means that the cat was an incarnation of her hopes and dreams. And the thing with Pardophilus is that she never had her great triumph, her save the day moment, a greater purpose, or a noble goal that she upholds. Because that's not what she's about. Considering she's a flame chaser, her goals in life isn't anything about saving the world or protecting the weak. It's doing nothing all day. Like a cat. As yet another person who has their roots in Sundown Alley, she was known locally as the Sundown Thief. Her life wasn't great by any metric. First, she's an orphan, also homeless, and broke. She spent much of her life barely getting by, so her only wish really is just to get a good life for herself, which becomes quite a challenge when there's Honkai around. But as an old saying goes, with crisis comes opportunity, and getting an opportunity, she will. And here lies the wackiest backstory for a flame chaser. First, she had this bright idea of sneaking into this organization called Morph, and then got herself on an operating table for a mantis surgery, which she somehow survived despite the odds. She joined the Morph, which finally got her a nice place to stay and plenty of food to eat, which sounds great and all. But what about the usual fighting the Honkai that the people in Morph was supposed to do? Well, she didn't need to do any of that. Because despite getting a mantis surgery which was supposed to make you into some kind of super soldier, she instead remains as harmless as an elemental Valkyrie fighting the Kalen boss. So at the end of the day, she really just became a cat girl for food and water. And if Elon presenting his genetically modified cat girl project to his investors has made me realize anything, is that this is fucking useless. What you're seeing is advanced warfare. Like, you cannot make this up. How can a person be this lucky? I guess we all had that one lucky friend that whenever they try to do anything luck based like gachi games, then they somehow get a rare character in their first 10 row and then proceed to get the best in slot weapon for said character without reaching any pity. Tension aside, luck is pretty much part of Phyllis's second name. This is one time she got shot and survived because she had plot armor. I mean, a single coin that she kept as a lucky charm. As I stated earlier, she also didn't actually fight that often, if at all. Instead, she's relegated to logistics and infiltrations. She was sent on a mission to bust into a facility to steal a box of goodies which would have been really difficult, but little did Commando that she already stole it when she was scoping out the place earlier, so... Everyone back to the base, partner. With immense luck, Pardo mostly got out of most disasters scot-free, but it doesn't mean that they wouldn't affect her. For example, she missed the Hershey of Binding because she got food poisoning and slept through the whole thing. And finding out about what happened afterward wouldn't be great for anyone's mental well-being. And with 13 menaces including her being brought together to form a team, she still did not need to fight, lounging around which is where we finally get back to the cat. The game makes it very clear that this thing was an incarnation of Pardophilus wanting to go back to the good old days. You know, daydreaming, being able to do whatever you please, or having a care in the world, even while it's ending. And talking about world ending events, what did she do when the final Hersha came? She actually decided to go with the rest to the moon, and when you read about how the Hersha murdered two of them less than five minutes into the battle, you can probably guess who would have been included in those fallen two because no luck gonna save you from the final Hersha. So basically, Pardo was a spectator to most things happening, at most getting a participation medal. But this doesn't mean she wasn't affected any less by these things. She was devastated when she missed Sakura dying after trying to rescue her sister, turn Hersha. She wondered if she would have made the difference if it was her that did it. Maybe she could have actually done something. In any case, did she really do anything? Not really. But characters like her are what provides us the player with an extra insight on how the pivotal events of the game affected the world, and how the most depressing event has an effect even to the most positive amongst us. This has been another Fire Moth series video with Mobius, Hua, and Alicia remaining. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and thank you for watching.